everyone. In this review, we provide a practical five-step approach to the clinical evaluation and treatment of nausea and vomiting that is suitable for application in both the primary care and subspecialty settings. My name is Junit Dome and I'm a internal medicine resident at the Mayo program. Today, we will be going over the review of a practical five-step approach to nausea and vomiting that will be published in the March 2022 edition of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. And I wrote this along with Dr. Amrit Kamboj and Dr. Seth Sweetser. My name is Amrit Kamboj, and I'm the second author on this concise review. I'm currently a gastroenterology fellow at Mayo Clinic. Nausea and vomiting are common presenting complaints in the inpatient and outpatient settings. The clinical approach to nausea and vomiting can be challenging given the many possible etiologies and vast array of diagnostic and therapeutic options. This is a diagram that highlights the five-step approach to nausea and vomiting. I will begin with step one. Step one is to define what the patient means by nausea and vomiting. It is very important to distinguish from other conditions such as regurgitation, retching, and rumination as the evaluation and treatment of these conditions is markedly different. Step two involves assessing symptom duration and to assess whether the nausea or vomiting is acute or chronic. Acute nausea and vomiting is defined as a duration less than seven days, while chronic symptoms are defined by a duration of greater or equal to four weeks. For chronic nausea and vomiting, it is useful to consider the following categories. One, medication side effects. Two, neurologic causes. Three, gastrointestinal diseases. Four, metabolic or endocrine conditions. And five, psychosocial etiologies. The differential diagnosis for nausea and vomiting is broad, and this figure demonstrates the various etiologies for nausea and vomiting, ranging from medications and toxins, neurologic causes, gastrointestinal causes, endocrine, metabolic etiologies, and psychogenic causes. Step three is to specifically consider medication or toxin side effects. Reactions to medication are a common cause of nausea and vomiting, especially within days after initiating therapy, although the onset of symptoms may be insidious. Many different medications may cause nausea and vomiting, with common culprits including non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, antiarrhythmic agents, antibiotics, anti-epileptic drugs, and opiates. Step four is to use the patient's presentation, severity of symptoms, and physical exam findings to formulate a differential diagnosis and to guide further evaluation with laboratory, imaging, and procedural tests. It is important to clarify details regarding the onset of symptoms, such as abrupt versus gradual, timing in relation to food or frequency, nature of emesis, such as undigested or partially digested food, presence of bile and volume, in associated symptoms, such as abdominal pain, weight loss, early satiety, bloating, or change in bowel habits. Step five is to direct treatment based on knowledge of the neurotransmitters and receptors involved in the central and peripheral emetic pathways. 5-HT3 antagonists, such as ondansetron, are highly effective in treating nausea and vomiting due to activation of both the central and per peripheral pathways. Phenothiazines, such as prochloroperazine and butyrophenones, are particularly useful in patients with vomiting of central origin, such as migraine headaches and vomiting related to toxic agents. Anticholinergic and antihistamine medications, such as diphenhydramine or meclizine, are effective for treating nausea and vomiting associated with vertigo and motion sickness. Here we can see a table of select antiemetic and prokinetic agents. Selected antiemetic agents include the serotonin antagonists, the phenothiazines, anticholinergic agents, antihistamines, corticosteroids, benzodiazepines, neurokinin-1 receptor antagonists, and the benzamides. On the right, you can see the different side effects for each of these agents. In conclusion, nausea and vomiting is a complex multifactorial symptom. Using a rational five-step approach can help narrow the large differential diagnosis and direct treatment. We hope you find this review article on an approach to nausea and vomiting informative and clinically relevant for your practice. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients 
by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.